Hello, everybody. So I'm here. I'm going to speak a little bit about developer communities and how Cowrie is trying to drive further ad developer adoption for the Ethereum ecosystem and the projects within it. Um, and talk about the EF grant that we received and how we've been using that. So current community landscape for crypto projects, as many of you are familiar, consists of developers, users, and thirdly, token holders. With few exceptions, the most successful projects today have really strong core developer ecosystems building on top of them. Um, and we can learn a lot from the lessons of Web 2 and apply that to Web 3. We don't need to reinvent the entire playbook. So there you have it. This is how many of us think of our communities. But in many cases, this is what makes a really healthy Web 3 community. And that user group, you want it to expand, to take over, um, and make all token holders users as well. But really what's important is that core kernel, the developers. So now we're just going to focus on that developer ecosystem and what to do there. And some of these lessons can be learned and applied to user groups in more technical ecosystems. But for now, I'm just going to focus on developers. Um, so one key component is have a technical community manager for technical communities. Uh, it's really important that people can get into the code, answer questions, uh, come up with creative demos, really inspire your, uh, your users, your developers. Um, a lot of times in this ecosystem, we see pre-product people investing in marketing and big pushes. Um, it's way more effective if people can actually get into the code or play around with a test net or an SDK. And the best teams, so this is based off of 30 plus interviews with um, developer community managers and developer relations, both in Web 2 and Web 3. The best teams are focusing on key metrics. And relentlessly iterating, keeping their eye on those key metrics, and just making sure that they're getting the engagement and the adoption uh, that they'd like to see. Um, this is a framework which I really like for measuring the impact that you can have on a developer community. It's from Phil Legata for, of Nexmo. And he has taken the pirate metrics of startups, so R, and then taken it all the way through to product, because there's a loop back and a cycle there. And it starts with awareness. So why should I use your platform? What is it? Um, just knowing that it's out there. Then second, acquisition. It's not good enough just to know that it's out there. Like, I need a relationship with you as a developer. Either it's an NPM install, uh, which is a little bit harder to track with metrics, but you can use email um, strategies, these types of things. Having an engaged um, platform where people can ask questions, where people can interact with your content, get in touch with you. Uh, and what's really important is that this cycle flows all the way down into product. So if your community is not really involved in the decisions that you're making in product and potentially even contributing to the code base, um, you're missing a big opportunity there. So what does Kauri do? Kauri is really focused on the first couple of areas. So it's awareness for your project and acquisition. So people taking the first step, actually using uh, your technology for the first time. And our main focus is the Ethereum ecosystem and um, the, the tools, libraries, and frameworks within the ecosystem. And there are three main, within our community, there are three main types of users. So there are the readers who are coming to Cowrie to learn about how to use this technology or just want to read an interesting article. 
Um, contributors, contributors are writers. Uh, they are a rare breed. They're hard to come by. But um, having a really good writer can make a huge difference for your project. And then communities. Communities keep content up to date. They interact with it. They engage with it. Uh, they point out gaps. Um, and com contributors and communities is an area which we're really focused on. And I'll share a bit more about this in a second. But before I jump into that, this is what Carrie looks like. So this is the home page. This is for our first user group. This is for readers um, so that they come in, they know where to go. They can read about topics which are important in, a, in the Ethereum ecosystem, getting started, finance, scaling, privacy, these types of things. Then um, essentially, or an essential component is you need to be good at the single player game. We spend a lot of time catering towards writers so that they can write in, mark down, have content, have clear attribution. Uh, so this was written by Hader. Um, he's a full stack dev, uh, loves using Kotlin, um, and part of the Java community. And he wrote this article about using Web3J for user authentication. And then kind of bringing that together is multiple contributors can now contribute to like one community. And here, this is the Java Ethereum community. So there are representatives from Consensus's Pegasus team, which wrote a client in Java called Pantheon, which is now Hyperledger Bezu, uh, the IO Builders team, a couple of Cari team members, because our back end is in Java, and a couple of individual contributors, um, and importantly, Connor Svensson, who uh, is the creator of the Web3 library. But what's interesting about communities is um, many people can have the permissions to keep content up to date. Um, and this is where we've been using a lot of the grant funding. So, uh, and, and the key to this is rewarding writers. So to, to get good content out there where there are gaps within the, the ecosystem. So grants right now are coming from the Ethereum Foundation um, and consensus grants. This is sponsored a lot of the getting started materials. Um, many of the tools, libraries, and frameworks have been written about, and then also working on keeping like the Ethereum wiki up to date, Solidity docs, various different docs. Um, one area which Cari is also moving into if you want to get in touch is commission content. So if your project needs better tutorials, uh, help your developer community understand how to use you, so that why, that top of the funnel, um, let us know. And then getting involved, the next communities which we're launching are Getting Started, which will come out this week. Uh, this has some really exciting content, including a couple of tutorials on how to use a new um, web ID, which means you don't need to set up your whole tool chain. Uh, and it, it's just some interesting templates to give developers which are new to the Ethereum ecosystem that first aha moment. And you'll hear more about that experience in other talks, so Albert's talk, Aya's talk. Um, the Superblocks team has been doing some great work there. Web3 onboarding is another one. ETH2, as we the contract gets deployed and get closer to a robust uh, beacon chain in the beginning of next year. We'll have materials on how do you actually um, connect with the network, how do you uh, send funds to the staking contract, that kind of stuff. And then L2 scaling, which is a really important topic. And there's been a ton of research over the past few years. But I think we're now moving from research into actual um, production use cases. So get in touch if you'd like to be involved. This is all about community, um, making 
uh, greater engagement with each of these projects and bringing more developers into the Ethereum ecosystem. So you can reach me at my email or our Twitter account is Kauri underscore IO. Thank you very much.